Hello and welcome to the Insomnia Running Club podcast. I am your host Mark Gallagher. How are you? How are things been going this week? Apologies, this is going out a bit late. I'll be honest with you, my head has been up my arse the past week. Uh, really since I've done the last podcast, lockdown has maybe got the better of me on a few days. And I've just lost focus, lost uh say to what i was doing sort of got consumed in the the lockdown effect shall we call it the never-ending cycle of uh of lockdown uh but i think i am out of the woods um i'm, I'm in a better place a lot more focus going on this week um big 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 focus generally whenever i'm i've had a bit of a funk um it's down to a couple of things it's either down to work haven't been in work or it's down to exercise or it's down to maybe replacing work with um other um events or projects that i've given myself and i'll be honest with you lockdown it is not a holiday um i don't know what other people's experience are but um with two kids in the house it's a different thing altogether trying to give them structure Trying to keep them from murdering each other, trying to keep them entertained, trying to keep them happy is difficult all day, every day, 24-7, seven days a week. We're now in the seven weeks of it. It is tough. It's very, very tough. You hear people talk about after they've been away on a holiday and they want to need another holiday <laughs> just, to, just to relax. This is no holiday. This is definitely not a holiday. Changes in my week have been uh, that my wife is now working full time again. So where before we were splitting things, me and my wife uh, with the kids, you know, different duties, you know, teaching them, taking them out, keeping them occupied, doing bits and pieces. During the day, it, it's me. It's me that's doing that um, during the day now. And I'll be honest with you, it's no, it, it's, it's not a gift. It's not uh, It's not easy. It's just not easy. And that's probably where I've been annoyed at, at myself in the past week is that they're my kids. This should be the easiest job in the world because I love them to death. But it is hard work trying to keep them entertained. Trying not to scare the life out of them also with what's going on in the world. My little boy keeps asking, why can I not go see grannies? And why can I not do this? And pretty much our excuse at the minute or what are what... The way we're explaining it is it's the germs that are out there. Can't go anywhere until all the germs are cleared up. And for the most part, he's happy enough with that. But I think he just wants the germs to piss off so he can go and see his grannies now too. He's missing them madly. Uh, and my, my little girl, she's just at that age. She just needs more babies, more people, more things around her just to let her imagination grow and... and develop really so lockdown has been tough family life is good everybody is happy for the most part but on those days where everybody's throwing a wobbler cracking up it is difficult and it's hard to get your head out of that because you don't have a workplace to go to you can't go to a gym you can't go to a pool you for me my escape is my exercise and for this week, a couple of things that I'm working on, a couple of projects and a few things. Obviously, there's Connemara uh, and I'm looking into other things as well. And I'm just looking at where my body is at or where it was after the 24 hour run and really what I need to, to do. Uh, I think I was kidding myself to a certain degree. Being honest, you know, we were out doing 30 mile runs, 40 mile runs and I was, I mean, I was doing them body was fine you know could cope with it didn't have to take long periods of time off to recover or anything like that so it was good but as far as my body condition I was carrying too much weight and even knew it was just carrying too much weight and because I was running all those miles and it wasn't causing me any grief it was fine you know for me in my head I was like well that's just the way I am and I can carry the weight after doing that 24 hour run with the, my knees giving me jip joints just that lethargicness to get going once I stopped again. 
I just knew I'm just not in prime condition and I really need to focus on getting my whole body, not just below the waist, you know, hips, glutes, tams, quads, calves, ankles, knees, don't need to just get those strong. I need my whole body uh, to be strong. Um, great thing for me in lockdown is the folks that are over the fence. They are starting a CrossFit gym local to us, literally half a mile drive down the road. Uh, and I can't wait for that to open. But one of the great things for me has been that escape, the over the fence chats. I talked before about home improvement, um, about uh, Tim Allen and his, his neighbor having a chat about drywall and timber and whatever else. Me and, and my neighbor across the fence, we're talking about fitness. We're talking about strongman stuff, about endurance stuff, muscle, sweat, people hurting themselves, people going to the extreme, people putting out, and that's the stuff. That's, that's good chat. That is good chat to get your head away from lockdown uh, and to escape, essentially. But not only that, he has some real good nuggets of, of wisdom there um, and no doubt when I'm chatting to him again I'll pick his brain some more but that has been one a great thing uh, this week definitely it, it's helped um, pick up the momentum I'm one of those people where I get something in my head I'll just go and do it uh, you know for example strength condition this was all leading up to strength conditioning you know with my body not being in, in peak condition so this week especially I have really, really focused on strength conditioning, but I've really focused as well on how to how to monitor it and how to set a baseline of where I'm at now. So this week has really just been seeing what my baseline is. Well, if I work hardest, what what can I get to? So that is the where I need to break through and get beyond to to become. Just I feel like I just need to become superhuman. Feel like I need to become superhuman. I need to become super fit. That when I need, I want to feel that if my legs completely give up on me, I get near handstand the remaining miles of the Connemara One Hundred uh, to get across the finish line. Crawl, roll. Whatever it may be, I just want my body to be in a place where 100 miles is no, it's not a challenge. My body can do it, whether my legs do it the whole time or whatever, um, 100 miles is going to get smashed. Um, but that's what I'm saying. I just throw myself at these things. So having a bit of a knowledge of fitness and a bit of a knowledge of exercises, I've just come up with things to do. Um, but again, the great thing about the guys across the, the fence is Bosu Ball have a sore ankle. Uh, chatted to him next day. They have a Bosu Ball from the gym. It's come across and I'm able to use that. Any amount of offers of do you want plates and weights and whatever. I don't need them essentially because what I'm actually using at the minute for doing my strength conditioning is Bosu Ball for more specific stuff. But it is push-ups, sit-ups. I have about 10 breeze blocks at the side of my house. I have a laborer's uh, bucket with a rope strap around it. I have all odd bits of concrete that have hardened, that have been sat in a rubble pile, piled into it. And I have a half-filled keg. And I am making up workouts that are just fantastic. They're fun. When you're lifting a half empty keg, you can't help but feel like, I don't know, like just this beast of a man. <laughs> and, and I'm not, I am not, most definitely not. Most, some people look at me and go, you're pipsqueak, you know, but whenever you're lifting stuff like that, you can't help but feel strong afterwards. You know, you feel pumped. You feel great. Um, not only that, it is actually quite difficult I was doing it with no not zero wasn't filled at all uh, and I've half filled it and the difference in it and the workout you get it and you, the pump and the the feeling you get from it is just fantastic it, it's brilliant so 
yes, that, that's been one of my focuses. I've tried to focus on so many areas. My big deal, my big problem with the 24-hour run was after 60 miles, I felt like I was spent. I had a lot. I had more time to go than I had energy to go. Um, and... I managed to piece together 21 miles after that, but that was tough going. And I think if I was in the middle of Connemara, up and down roads, by myself, pishing here in rain, darkness of night, wet clothes, feeling sorry for myself, that would only be tougher whenever my legs were so sore and so tired. So... Again, using coining a phrase, this 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 week uh, podcast is brought to you more by my neighbour with some of the terms he's been saying. But robustness, uh, I need to become robust. I need to become tough. Now that doesn't mean I need to become a hefty uh, bodybuilder. Not not at all. I still need to be running. I still need to be lean. But what my plan is is to have my body as strong as it can be. Currently, as I'm chatting to you, I weigh 81 kilos. I have a fair bit of body fat there that I know I can strip down. If I could, rather than go into the Connemara 100 at 70 kilos, super lean and run it, maybe a bit faster, I still think the lack of muscle will be a problem. You know, more muscle means more blood can circulate to it, means more endurance, pretty much. Um, yeah, more muscle. If I was to go, if I was to strip all my body fat, but I'm the pile on muscle, I have, if I rock in, add 80 kilos, 70 kilos to Connemara, but I am wrapped as tight as steel, and I am in a great place physically, great place mentally, that's what I'm saying. That That's where I'm going to destroy that race. It's not going to destroy me. And that's where my head's at. And that's where my focus is at this week. Uh, diet is also a big thing. I touched on it last week with diet. I'm currently reading Matt Fitzgerald uh, Diet Cults uh, book. And it's fantastic. I'm seven chapters in. And there's definitely no conclusion from it yet. But the more you read these things, there was a chapter about, um, I can't remember which American president it was, but American president picked a general uh, from his army and said, you know, I need you to go and quit. This is back in, this is 100, 100 odd years ago. Uh, I need you to go back uh, across the country and see where settlements can go. And I need you to, I need you to map out this land um and, and see what the crack is and and go along the way you know you'll be as gone you'll be gone for as long as you're gone this is your team of men um you know you get together your kit get together anything you feel you need and away you you go uh, and he's saying that at this uh president's banquets normally there's normally 10 dishes of food they're opulent they're heavy you know there's so many courses and there's so much variety uh, of all these different meats and all these different vegetables, pulses, sweets, you name it, it had everything. Um, and that was the, the, the diet almost that they'd become accustomed to, this variety. But going across America uh, into the unknowns, they could only pack so much with them. And they had to go to, you know, the outback of beyond uh, and explore and map this territory and see where settlements could go and things like that and obviously they had to adapt you know the diet that they knew um the opulent diet they had to change it but they had to change it from place to place where one thing grew in one place it didn't grow in another so their staple for three months had to be turned on its head and they had to discover a new staple in a, in a new place, you know, whether it be potatoes in one place, whether it be corn in another, whether it be just meat, purely just elk or uh, bison or whatever it was. And the human body can adapt. 
But the thing about it was the amount of the amount that these explorers and these men were eating was massive. They were obviously burning a lot of calories, but they were consuming a shit ton of food. And that's where I'm thinking, I think I touched on it last week, where it's 2020, MasterChef is on the TV, there's a good food network, and we are bombarded with advertisements of food. Everything is advertised to you as a dish, as a full dish. So, you know, it's not steak, but it's steak with dauphinois potatoes or mashed potatoes or baked potato with cheese and hey, whack on some pepper sauce. And while you're at it, have a blast of onion rings and this here. And all of a sudden you have this massive, bulky, saturated fat meal or even taking a, a, a salad. You know, oh, you have your salad, well, whack on some Caesar dressing, whack on some crispy coated chicken of some sort that's been fried in something, whack in some croutons. All of a sudden, it's the wee things, it's the dish you make of it, whack on cheese. It's the dishes you make of stuff that make it heavy. And I think I've just been eating dishes for the past God knows how long, couldn't tell you. Whereas if I take a step back and I'm trying now just to eat food. So the other day I had a meal and it consisted of a tin of tuna, um, an apple, and I whacked into myself about three tablespoons of peanut butter, some green tea, and a lot of water. And that was a meal. My body was satisfied. I actually felt fantastic after it. Um, and that was that. Um, yeah, that, that's it. I think I've just been making, piling on too many other compliments and things with food. And that's where the body fat is creeping up. So that's my focus. It's not so much a diet. I couldn't tell you. It's the Mark Gallagher pan in the sky insomnia running club I have in the foggy notion. That is really what it is. But that's kind of the idea is that I'm just eating foods in as whole a form as I can. Now I'm not murdering myself either because I am exercising and I know for a fact, I know I've exercised and I've trained long enough that I know if I deprive myself of calories, if I do like a calorie deficit type thing, I will be in the worst mood possible. My wife will throw me out of the house. My kids will disown me. I will be an absolute horror story to live with. I become a grumpy gobshite. Um, so I'm not doing that, especially during lockdown. I'm not putting that on anyone. Therefore, calories, couldn't care less how many I'm having. I'm eating when I'm hungry. I'm just trying to pick the right food when I'm hungry. Trying to lay off things, even like coffee. I counted it. There one day... Uh, about three, four weeks back after the 24 hour run, whenever it was starting to feel like, ah, oh, that's it, I've run for 24 hours, I can just drink beer and eat whatever I want and I'll run five or six miles here and there. Um, and that, I think I put on about seven, eight pounds in about two to three weeks after the, the 24 hour run because of that mentality. But there was one day, um, actually worked it out and accounted back how many coffees I have. Now, I like coffee, um, but I like milky coffee. Um, yeah, like milky coffee, you know, throw me in jail, who cares? But the amount of calories that's in it, and one day I must have had 10 coffees. Now, maybe I didn't finish them all, but 10 cups of coffee, very, very milky. That's a lot of milk. That's a lot of calories. That's a lot of just empty nothing just because it was bored and stuck a kettle on and let's have another coffee and it comes out in your skin and you feel you feel rancid for it now don't get me wrong i love coffee um but this week i'm trying to almost have it just on one day a week one day a week i'll have a couple of coffees and um, the rest of the time i have now switched to matcha green tea and i have to say i'm actually enjoying it i'm enjoying the feeling of not being bloated all the time. I'm enjoying the feeling of just 
Damn it, my skin. My skin even feels great. My skin on my face, skin on my body is clearing up. Everything's just starting to feel better. Um, just from a week of not eating processed stuff or not eating muck, really. Um, haven't touched crisps, haven't um, really been black, uh, dark chocolate. I'll eat dark chocolate. Um, 85% dark chocolate. I will have, um, I'll have maybe have a couple of uh, squares of that after a workout. Um, but again, other than that, that's a treat for me. Other than that, there's been nothing, a plenty of fruit, and it's really, really working, and I'm really feeling good for it. Um, so there you go. I can't give you what the actual diet is, uh, but yeah, it's trying to eat things more in their whole form eating plenty of them, not allowing myself to get overwhelmed with hunger. If I feel remotely hungry, I'll eat. Yeah, that, that is it. And so far, it's been, it's, it's, I can't tell you what the scales say, but as far as how my body feels and how I'm even starting to look in a short period of time, I feel great. So yeah, has to be, has to be working for me. Uh, the other thing is the to try to keep my head out of the just rubbish that's out there with lockdown is running. I have ramped it up uh, once more. So like I say, I was running after the 24 hour run. Um, I gave myself a week off and then I gave myself a couple of weeks of trying to get myself uh, back into some sort of being able to do runs longer than five, six mile without feeling sore, and I'm there now. So yeah, long runs are happening again. Um, last week done forty five mile week. This week will be a fifty mile week, and things will just again start going up and up and up. We now have less than thirteen weeks until Connemara. uh, and I really hope it happens. To be honest, I really hope it happens. It's something. For me to look forward to, pretty much sporting events, races have all been knocked on the head. Apart from UFC 249, how that happened, I don't know. Um, But yeah, going to Connemara, more than likely it'll be me socially distant from everyone and anyone in the whole world, it'll feel like. Um, apart from the two, possibly three lads that'll be in the van. Uh, on the on the on the road with me, my crew. But I can't. I ho really hope it happens. I really, really hope it happens. It's something to look forward to. If it doesn't, it's not the end of the world. But I've put in uh, well what I have in my head, the torture, the pain, the effort, the thought, the creativity that I'm willing to put into this over the next thirteen weeks. I have the enthusiasm for it. I really just want, I want to give it a go. I really want to give it a go and I want to have it rubber stamped and say, yep, Mark Gallagher is able to run 100 miles. Can't wait. I can't wait. I, I'm I, the, the training this week has sparked it up to a new level where I just want it. It was drifting out of my thoughts because it happens to me all the time. And it's one of those things that I know, I know that it's just the way my, my mind works. I'll set a goal. I'll then get close to that goal and I'll start to become complacent. Then what needs to happen is I need another bigger goal. So in my head, I'm not sharing it with you what my, my next goal is, but there, there's something else I'm working on on the other side of it. And for me to get to that, I need to do the 100 miles uh, and I need to do it and feel strong. So it's constant. I'm constantly putting challenges. I'm constantly putting goals in front of me to to do. And that complacency then gets blasted out the window. Uh, two fingers to it. You can piss off. I'm working hard now. Time to get the head down. Let's go. So yeah, from where I was last week, head in the gutter, fed up with lockdown, to trying again to, to make the most of it, uh, trying to do 
best for my kids, trying to educate them, trying to entertain them and trying to have them come out of this and hopefully in years to come they'll go, Do you remember that time and they have a fond memory of it rather than, Jesus, do you remember dad was flipping ready to flipping explode because he was on the edge all the time. Don't want that. Don't want that. Trying my hardest to keep everything positive. And again, don't think we all could have expected it. Whenever I was chatting about this eight weeks ago, uh, nine weeks ago on a podcast, that it would have been going on this long and the journey we've got ahead of us. But this is it. This is something that we have to deal with. It's with us here and now. Can't let it beat you. You just have to keep going and going and going and put challenges in front of yourself. Work towards them, blast through them, keep up the momentum. For me, one of the things this week, which was probably going to be one of the toughest things to do, was do this, talk on a podcast and feel like I had something good to say. At the start of this week, I didn't feel like I had anything good to say, therefore I didn't want to do a podcast. I don't like to do this podcast and I come across as a negative bashing of this and of that and it doesn't help anybody. Negativity just breeds more negativity and it's a cesspit and it's just toxic and horrible. So that's why I didn't want to do anything earlier on in the week. My head's in a far better place now where I think that's it. Got myself in such a tizzy or worked up that I thought I need to go full steam at something else. Set up a new challenge. We're going full steam ahead and in a great place now. Put That's probably my thing this week. Keep putting challenges in front of yourself. Don't get complacent. When you're working towards something else and it becomes too big, put something bigger on the other side of it again. All of a sudden it starts to feel manageable uh, and that you can do it and then you work towards the other thing. Uh, that's where my head's at. If that makes sense to you, busted, starting to feel like everything's becoming overwhelming, um, complacent because it looks very, very difficult, put something more difficult on the other side of it and all of a sudden that challenge doesn't look as bad, it doesn't look as hard. Um, we can all get through it. Lockdown, we've survived seven weeks of it. With another seven weeks, we're going to do it. Doesn't matter. Get your head right. Start training. Start cooking. Start writing. Start blogging. Start gardening. Start painting. Start storing farts in jars. I don't know what you're going to do, but just keep doing it. Uh, that'll be interesting to see if there was a farts in jars museum, that post-lockdown farts in jars museum that opened up. Um, I wonder would anybody pay to go into it. Um, there you go. Your mind goes to some crazy, crazy places. But listen, keep a head up. Keep safe. Keep socially distant. Keep chatting the family on Zoom, FaceTime, phone. Just keep involved. Keep going. Keep yourself strong. You're doing well. You're in it. Find yourself in a lull. Put a big challenge in front of yourself and just attack it. That's where I'm at and I have to say I'm in a far, far, far better place this week than, than where I was last week. Uh, and we'll never know what will come of next week and the developments and changes and whatever and how much we can do or things that can then change in our life. But until then, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. I really hope... Uh, you're keeping well and again please feel free to reach out chat to us on facebook uh, and so, uh, run insomnia on instagram run insomnia on the uh, run insomnia website run insomnia.com anything training related goal setting related what well, you name it uh, you you have it you name it just shout out to us uh, and again, actually, one big shout out this week. Um, <clears throat> only found this out today. Uh, my coach from Taekwondo, uh, his son, this week. So in luck, that here, here's how you can. Here's an inspiring story for you. I was about to shut this whole thing down, 
and he's just popped into my head and it's an inspiring story and it's talking about not taking no for an answer his son big into taekwondo now you're going taekwondo how can you do taekwondo or compete at taekwondo when we're all in lockdown there's two parts to it there's an art form side of it and there's a uh, sport taekwondo sport uh, sparring side to it he is very 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 good at the art form side of it so he put himself in to a few online competitions could be the strangest thing in the world where he's in full taekwondo kit he's out his back garden beside the japanese maple tree in his full regalia doing all his art form uh, bits and pieces i didn't know this but he entered himself into a competition an online competition this has proved to be one of the biggest competitions all done by video uh, all critiqued by video um had a pretty sort of specific setup to it he is 16 15 16 years old he in his category there was 951 people in his category that's not to mention all the other categories that were going on in the world he is now he got the bronze medal he has placed third so james if your dad allows you to listen to this or if your dad's listening to it i just want to say i'm very very proud I'm glad that I uh, I get the the train with you. That is a fantastic achievement. Very 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 well done. Big pat on the back. Um, that is not taking no for an answer in lockdown. That sums it up massively. There you go. He is third in the world. He 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 is he got the bronze medal uh, at sixteen years old in his back garden because he didn't take no for an answer so what else can people achieve during lockdown you know it's unbelievable it just goes to show you put your mind to it and you focus on it and you want it enough you can do it so i'm immensely proud of him he's a real nice kid um, and he deserves it massively uh, well done james uh, if you if you hear this but listen folks Thanks again for listening to me. That was often a bit of a tangent there and that was a bit of a bit of a random one that I threw you in, but he deserves a shout out and well done to him. And keep going this week, folks, and I'll chat to you next week, hopefully with some more good stuff. Uh, and we'll all be getting along, uh, Rosie, and we might even come out of this all very, very soon. So stay safe. I'll chat to you soon. All the best. Bye.